Welcome to Decreasing Manufacturing Costs of Generative Design. Uh, if you have any questions uh, throughout this, uh, please add them to the questions tab in the control panel and we will have time to answer those near the end of the presentation. So before we get started, just a little bit of background on M2 Technologies. So M2 Technologies is a consulting firm focused on productivity, improving manufacturing process efficiency, and reducing manufacturing costs. Using general design and best-in-class manufacturing and asset management processes, our team of industry experts can help you become more sustainable, more profitable, and more prepared to meet the demands of urbanization in a rapidly changing world. We are committed to helping clients realize the business benefits of BIM and asset management quickly and economically by facilitating the use of innovative processes like and technologies, uh, whether streamlining your product design, maximizing asset longevity, or optimizing your processes. Our team is one of the most experienced groups of manufacturing technology consulting professionals. We partner with world leaders such as Autodesk, Panzura, EaglePoint, and Bluebeam to utilize innovative technologies and methodologies to empower sustainable manufacturing and overcome local challenges. Uh, to support the industry, we offer a wide range of services, including CAD management, simulation, project lifecycle management, CAM, CIO advisories, and various training. Uh, I'll be presenting today. My name is Tristan Gunderson. I'm an applications engineer here at M2 Technologies. I work with our clients to help them get the most out of their applications and workflows uh, in order to best meet the demands of the industry. So today we're going to be covering generative design and a lot of the benefits included with it. So we're going to start with looking at what is generative design, the economic, sustainable, and competitive advantages, leveraging generative design tools to work more efficiently, and why you don't need to make big changes to see big results. So to get started, I'll look at a little introduction to generative design. So generative design is a powerful tool that when implemented in the design process, assists to quickly explore new and innovative design options. By inputting the relevant geometry and parameters, the program uses advanced AI simulation and algorithms to run an iterative process exploring unique permutations of the design. This allows your engineers to quickly explore and validate new designs and criteria, including changes in geometry, stress loading, and even different material options, as well as manufacturing processes. So we're going to walk through this design process to show how it fits into the current design process and some of the workflow benefits to using generative design. We're going to start by looking at this uh, claw on this machine. We're going to take these grippers and we're going to throw them through a generative design process. So the first step in the process is isolating the necessary uh, geometry. So we're going to select our geometry that needs to remain within the product, and then the obstacle geometries to represent where we need bolts or other components to interact. We then can select the original shape, which it can use as a starting spot and select those obstacle geometries. Then we select our geometries that needs to remain, and we can apply constraints and forces to this geometry in order to represent the load cases of the forces it's going to have to interact with and sustain during actual use. This is what the general design process will use to best build the component you need. 
we can then select from a variety of different manufacturing processes in order to uh, cater the design to our needs. Anything from two uh, axis cutting all the way up to five axis milling or additive manufacturing. We also can select a variety of different material options to quickly assess their potential within the design. We have other settings we can change uh, in order to refine it better. And then once we do, it runs through this iterative process to optimize the design. It will then display all of the different options it comes up with. Here, we can select several of them to compare them side by side. And you can see it's going to show the stress concentration uh, based on the load case that was assigned. We can even analyze them in a graphical form, comparing factor safety, stresses, mass volume, materials, or even an estimation of the manufacturing cost for the different designs. Once we have these designs, we can look more closely at these stresses applied in order to best find the model that fits our needs. And if needed, we can even uh, refine the design further within the design space to make sure that it works for our manufacturing and product needs. Within uh, the program, we can then apply any uh, CNC instructions and you can see how we're able to quickly analyze different design options all within one quick and easy workflow. So there are three large advantages to the general design process. Reducing costs, designing more sustainably, and working more efficiently. Just one of these advantages can have a huge impact on business. But when you put all three of them together, it shows why this workflow is becoming more and more prolific in the industry and why these practices can help you get ahead or risk falling behind in the future. So we'll start by looking at the cost reduction. This is one of the largest issues that people look at when moving towards generative design, and largely because of the light weighting. So light weighting is the process of reducing the material usage of a component so that it is not, uh, as I say, uh, over-designed where it's, the stress concentrations uh, aren't optimized for the part. So throwing in the general design process, we can reduce that material to make sure that the design is specific to the needs of the component. By reducing this material usage, we're able to save in multiple different ways. We save on the raw material purchase needed to design the component. We're also able to explore more cost-effective material options. In the example below, the original component uh, for a elevator drive wheel was made out of a carbon steel. Now, carbon steel is originally used because of its uh, high strength. However, it is a very uh, expensive and heavy material comparatively and can be very difficult on tools in the manufacturing process. Instead, with general design, we're able to explore alternatives using aluminum. And we can see that the output of design was able to handle all these stresses necessary for the component with much less material usage with a much lighter material. Now using this lighter material and less material usage also greatly benefits the cost of transportation. This means there is less material having to be brought in and less weight on the components to ship back out. This also provides a reduction in cost for the labor and machining. When switching to this new design, uh, it not only is a, a more easy component to manufacture with less wear and tear on your 
machines and tool bits from the change in material. But it's also now optimized to look at using an alternative manufacturing option, such as casting for this component, which makes the waste easier to recycle in the manufacturing process and greatly cuts down on the manufacturing time by casting rather than milling from solid. The next benefit is being able to design more sustainable components. We're seeing a lot in industry of companies looking for uh, sustainable initiatives with their partners. And so generative design offers a great opportunity for a sustainable initiative to help stand out amongst the competition and to have a great impact on sustainable design. The first is again with the light weighting in reducing that material consumption. Uh, it's very important with you know, limited resources, you're able to cut down on that material usage and the same amount of material can go a lot further. You also can design more sustainably with different material options. You're able to explore materials that will either require less material usage or the materials themselves are more sustainable, such as moving away from unsustainable plastics or uh, volatile metals such as tungsten. And then you also can explore manufacturing processes that will have less of an environmental impact, such as additive manufacturing. Sustainable, uh, general design is also a great process when working on switching to in-house manufacturing. It allows you to design components uh, to your manufacturing needs, which will in turn cut down on the emissions from transporting, as well as the light weighting process. Another component of manufacturing in-house is with general design, you are able to consolidate parts uh, in order to reduce the purchased items and therefore again less items that need to be shipped in and less items that need to go out to your distributors and lastly because of the built-in rapid prototyping within the process uh, of those fea results being accessible directly out of the general design process because of the inputs you applied it allows you to greatly reduce the need for physical prototyping. While there usually will still be a physical prototype for one or two final designs, you do not have to worry about prototyping every design option along the way. You're able to quickly uh, narrow down your design and eliminate design options with the built-in FEA. And lastly, we're going to look at how the general design process improves efficiency. One of the common misconceptions of general design is that it replaces the engineering process. Instead, general design is a tool, just like any other CAD or CAM program, that allows engineers to more quickly and effectively assess and design components. With general design, they're able to quickly explore design alternatives based on different material options. They're able to look at different load cases, including uh, extreme failure conditions. They can quickly change or assess different geometric constraints and even look at the uh, effectiveness of different manufacturing processes for the design. They then get immediate FDA validation of the designs uh, because of the necessity for the stress setup uh, as part of the design process. You then are able to compare the different desi designs 
side by side in that FEA environment to look at those stresses and the factor of safety. And lastly, you can look at part consolidation. This again is taking a, a, a sub-assembly of a component and redesigning those fixtures to be a single component using generative design. All of these processes together allows engineers a lot more options and uh, a much uh, more uh, unique and original design process. It'll come up with design options that were not thought of ahead of time. Because of the nature of the generative design, it works very outside the box. And as engineers, the goal is usually to find a design that is going to work quickly and effectively. And thus, it's often the norm to fall back on try and true designs. Through this process, you're able to quickly look at unique and original design options that you wouldn't have come up with otherwise. And so lastly, we we'll look at the accessibility of this. A lot of people think that general design is still so far out there and it's not applicable to them today. However, a lot of our clients already have access to generative design through Fusion 360. Fusion 360 can work as a standalone product, but is also included in the product design and manufacturing collection. It works in tandem with Inventor, if that is your main uh, tool for 3D modeling, or it can be modeled within Fusion 360. And lastly, general design doesn't require any large scale changes to the manufacturing process. It can be tailored to any current manufacturing process from 2D, uh, two axis cutting, two and a half axis milling, up to five axis milling, casting, or even additive manufacturing. If you're looking for injection molding, or even uh, 3D metal printing. And so with that, I'm gonna open it up to any questions. Again, if you have questions, you can type them into the questions tab on the side panel. So we had one question I come in. So once I set up my calculations, how long does it take to get back? So using Fusion 360, uh, the general design process is actually done uh, using cloud computing. So it doesn't take any uh, effort of your local memory or machine. And you can watch the results come back in real time and you'll usually have meaningful results within 24 hours. And so we had another question asking if this is sent to the cloud. Uh, yes, Fusion 360 is currently a cloud-based program. All of the files are saved on your personal cloud drive, known as a Fusion team, and the computing for generative design is done on a cloud server 
held by Autodesk. We had another question asking if the cloud interacts with Vault. Uh, it actually does. Uh, there is currently a uh, Vault connection where you can uh, upload your files to the uh, team by setting up a cloud connector within Vault. And so you can have either manually or automatically uh, upload and download between your Vault folder and Cloud Drive. All right, we're going to give uh, another another 30 seconds or so here, see if we get any more questions. We have another one here. That says, uh, when you submit a prototype and the program offers you options, will it tell you which candidate is best for your base design? Uh, so when you uh, have the different options from the generative design study, there's a lot of different ways you can compare them. Uh, you, you always can uh, you know, visually check against that base design. Uh, but you can you look at other uh, potential items such as you know the the mass look at that stress distribution uh, and also by ch uh, adding or removing or even changing that yellow region which is that base design you can uh, alter where it starts from so when it's running the iterative pr process with that that yellow region of the base design, it actually will start from that shape and then run the iterative process from there. So you're going to get much more similar results to that base design using that than if you removed that segment and just had the, the green regions that needed to remain. That will result in much more original and organic designs than using that base region. But again, uh, you are able to quickly analyze the results uh, either graphically by comparing their mass material uh, manufacturing costs uh, or even looking at the designs side by side visually. Was the, so it will offer you an engineering-wise ideal shape. Uh, yes. Yeah, so the way the process works is it runs iterations comparing the uh, stress results uh, to what your uh, goal is for the uh, factor of safety. So when you set up the process, you'll say, you know, I'm looking for you know a factor of safety of two with a by, and reduce the mass as much as possible. Uh, so each time it changes the shape slightly, it'll compare the stresses to your factor of safety and it'll note places where it has 
uh, more material than it needs and places where it needs more material. And it will add and remove material to try and create that you know ideal shape as you uh, said. The other option, of course, is it has the ability to try and maintain the same amount of mass and uh, just refine it to uh, optimize the strength of the component for its needs while leaving the mass the same. So those are its two main processes is either uh, working at light weighting uh, within the given uh, stress concentration range uh, or maintaining that mass and optimizing it for the stresses. Also, the question of uh, is the presentation will be available to download. Uh, this presentation will be uploaded onto our website uh, after, after this is over. So you should be able to find it there within the next couple days. All right, so with that, if you have any more questions, uh, you can always contact uh, your sales rep or go to our website, m2t.com, or contact our general sales support line. So if you have questions about general design or uh, what consulting or training services we can help provide to get you started with the process, uh, please reach out to us and we'll be happy to talk about it. So with that, thank you all for attending and I hope to see you again soon and help you with all of your general design needs.